Russians opposed to the return of Vladimir Putin as president of the Russian Federation are facing increasing pressure ahead of the election this Sunday. Election monitors from the country's top watchdog group Golos said opposition figures have suffered intimidation and factory workers are being forced to vote under tight control at their workplace, according to the Times of London. Protesters continue to call for an honest, open election, and many groups are already planning to challenge any irregularities following the results. FSRN's Ekaterina Danilova reports. Across the country, thousands have protested ahead of this weekend's presidential election. People represented all political movements and age groups have gone into the street. In Moscow, people held hands to form a ring around the city. In St. Petersburg, national opposition figure Garry Kasparov spoke to crowds gathered in the historic center of the city. There are 10, 12,000 of us, but we are citizens. We are free citizens. And today, both here and in Petersburg and in Moscow and in other Russian cities, we know that we are many and they are few. And so they are hiding behind the automobiles of the special forces, behind the police, behind chains. They're insulated from us because they know that they have no chance if they go out for real, honest elections. During the course of three months of protests, the popular opposition movement has become divided among groups with nationalist goals and those with democratic and civil society interests. The rift was visible at a protest in early February, when a nationalist leader who spoke following a gay rights activist said he was offended to be sharing the same stage with a homosexual. Olga Lenkova is the communications director with the LGBT advocacy group Coming Out. She says human rights groups couldn't organize under the same banner as nationalist groups. They have Russian imperial flags, they have all sorts of nationalistic symbolic at their actions, at their rallies, and all sorts of speeches that are really xenophobic. And this is the point where we split because we don't want this at our rallies. And we don't want, we as organization don't want to participate in rallies that are like this. The split among opposition groups resulted in separate protests on the Saturday and Sunday ahead of the election. Sergei Sorokin has attended all the opposition rallies in St. Petersburg that began after allegedly rigged parliamentary elections in December. Speaking at the last weekend's demonstrations, he said the split is a natural evolution of the opposition movement. Of course not all people can find a common perspective. Right now the time has come when there is a reason to unite for one common goal. So the split that has happened a little bit reduces the number of people. Here there would be three times the number of people, if not for the march that will take place tomorrow. But life is like that. Anyway, the people who came today will go out tomorrow. I also think I will be there tomorrow. They are people who cannot sit back and just watch what is happening. Sorokin said divisions among people in power about how to react to the surge in popular protests is the bigger problem for Putin than any divisions among the opposition. All the opposition groups are united in calling for free and fair elections. But many say this is not possible under current circumstances and legal requirements. Tatiana Darutina is the head of the League of Women Voters in St. Petersburg, a group that has trained hundreds of election observers. I don't expect honest elections this time. First of all, because some candidates have already been removed. Some candidates were not allowed to participate, and the legal system is inflexible. Five candidates are running for president. Putin has the greatest support among them, according to polls, and is expected to win re-election. 
Dorogina says little has been done to address evidence of widespread ballot stuffing and falsifications following the December 4th parliamentary election. The courts practically haven't looked at any of the cases yet. The reaction has been very weak. There were violations during the elections. Nobody has been punished. The new election campaign has been carried out practically without, one more time I repeat, without any analysis of previous violations. Dorotina's group and several others will gather evidence to formally challenge any irregularities with the Election Commission. Given the widespread belief that the election will be falsified and that Putin will be elected, many activists say protests against the people in power have only just begun. Opposition groups have already planned demonstrations for the day after the election. Yekaterina Danilova, FSRN, St. Petersburg, Russia.